In this video, I want to talk about a concept called regression toward the mean. So suppose that we are doing a study. It doesn't really matter too much what the study is about, but let's suppose that we find some people who have very low IQ scores. So we measure their IQ, they have these extremely low scores, and we would like to do something to help them out. We'd like to give them some kind of training to hopefully improve those scores. So we measure them at the beginning of our study, we found these people have very low scores. We then give them some kind of training. And then we measure them again at time two after the training. And just like we were hoping, we find that their IQ scores are substantially higher. And of course, we would like to make a conclusion like this training caused that result. And as usual, the question is, are we justified in doing that? Can we make that statement? Uh, do we have the internal validity to make a valid conclusion like that about cause and effect? Or are there alternative explanations other than our training that could have caused that difference? And regression toward the mean is one of those alternative explanations that we need to consider. So in general, this has to do this issue of regression toward the mean has to do with the fact that people have a certain a certain true value for whatever it is that we're measuring so uh, for example in this case they have some true underlying intelligence they have some level of intelligence and we try to get at that we try to get at that and measure that with an IQ test so they they end up with an IQ score which we hope accurately reflects their true intelligence, but that's not necessarily going to be the case. So almost all measurements are not completely accurate. There's some level of error. So let me actually get a little bit of space here. Let me erase this and get a little space. And let's suppose that we can take a peek. We can't really do this in real life, but let's suppose that we know that the true intelligence scores, we know what they are. And so we are going to look at how, what, the, what is the frequency of intelligence scores in the population. So this would be frequency. How many people in the population have a particular intelligence? And so intelligence would be along this axis. This would be intelligence. And we're saying, okay, most people are going to have some score in the middle. Very few people are going to have scores at the ends, you know, very, very low intelligence or extremely high intelligence. So probably this frequency distribution is going to look something approximately like this. Now, again, these are, this is their true underlying intelligence. So when we try to get at this, we have to have this imperfect measurement technique uh, called an IQ test. And so we might have a range of possible scores people can get on the IQ test, and we measure someone and suppose that they have a score right here of 100. The question is, with that score of 100, what was their actual intelligence? Now, if we had a perfectly accurate intelligence test, then we might expect that their score exactly represents their underlying intelligence. But the reality is that there's some error or randomness incorporated in the measurement. So maybe they really are very smart, but they got a little bit of a low score because they were very tired that day. Or maybe they're not quite as smart, but they got lucky on a question, that they happened to guess the right answer. So when we get this score of 100 down here, it's actually there's some error. So we know their true score is most likely to fall in some kind of a range between two points. We can say, oh, well, we're very confident that their real underlying intelligence is somewhere within the, a particular range of values. Now, where this idea of regression toward the mean comes in is when we pick people with very extreme scores. So we pick someone who is down here 
at the bottom who has a really, really low IQ score. Let's say it's a 50. And we've picked that person, of course. We've picked those extreme scores intentionally because those are the folks we most want to help. But there's an interesting issue here when we ask, what is the most likely true underlying intelligence of someone with an extreme score like this? And if there is substantial error or variability in the measurement, then what we're saying is the person's true score is not necessarily right here, but is in some kind of a range. Now, I've put this in a very extreme position so that it's going off of the graph here on purpose to show you something. What we're asking is, what do we think this individual's true underlying intelligence most likely is? This score comes from a person somewhere in this area. So right away we can rule out, because there's nobody in the population who has a score over here, we can rule out the possibility that their true underlying intelligence is even more extreme than it seemed. But it seems like it might be as extreme as it seemed, or possibly less so. Now, a key thing to understand here is this idea of frequency. So the higher up we are on this axis, the more people there are with that intelligence score. So this large area right here under the curve means that there are a lot of people with those scores. This small area over here at the extreme or this small area over here mean that there's very few people with those scores. So when we see a very extreme score like this, the question is, how likely is it that it really came from this area here? And the answer is it's much more likely that the person who got that score was somewhere over here. And because of the chance they happened that in the, the error in the measurement, they happened to score a lower score. So then the question is, if we come back and measure them a second time, what is their score most likely going to do? And the answer is that it's most likely that their intelligence is, and, and I don't want to be confusing with the colors here, their intelligence is probably somewhere over here rather than being over here. And that means that their score will tend to go toward the average or the mean where most of the people are. So when we measure them a second time in this case, because we pick people with such extreme low scores, those low scores were probably so low because they had some degree of chance involved. And when we measure those people a second time, it's very likely that we're going to get a, at least a somewhat higher score that second time around simply from this influence of error in the measurement. And that is what we call regression toward the mean. The mean being the average is this line down the center. This is the average score. This is where most people fall. When we measure someone and we find they have an extreme score, if the measurement has any substantial level of error in it, that extreme score ha probably has a large error component, which means when we come back and measure them again, they will probably be closer toward the average. That extreme score is, is less likely to be their underlying true uh, level of intelligence. That extreme score probably comes from someone who actually has a less extreme level of intelligence. So I, I really hope I'm not confusing you here. What we're saying is that there's simply more people in this moderate, middle, uh, toward the average, toward the mean area of the curve. So when we measure someone and we get an extreme score over here or over here at the very ends of the distribution, it's just simply more likely that those folks actually come from something more moderate toward the center because there's simply more people there. Now, to be clear, if there were no error in our measurement, this wouldn't be an issue. If there were no error in our measurement, then when we measure someone's score here, that directly maps to their true score. So if we measure an extreme score and there's no error involved, then that means 
they really just have an extreme score. But when there's error involved, this is the kind of thing you have to be concerned about. And because almost all measurements have a substantial amount of error in them, this is going to happen when you are looking at groups of people who have very extreme scores like this. And again, this is called regression toward the mean. The mean, again, simply being the average and we're going to be regressing toward that. Regression simply means uh, going back to something. So we, our scores are regressing toward the true score uh, because of the fact that error is probably what made them more extreme now that we're measuring them again. Just in terms of probability, we're most likely to get something less extreme, something closer toward the mean. So regression toward the mean is just simply saying that when we get a score that is somewhere out here in the extreme tails of the distribution, that it probably comes from someone who actually has a less extreme score, which means that those subsequent uh, measurements will tend to show this regression toward the mean. In practical terms, with our study over here, what that means is that this difference between this time one and time two measurement may very well have been caused by these extreme scores. Remember, these guys here have very low scores. Those scores are probably low, partly because of some kind of uh, error in the, in the measurement. So maybe those folks really do tend to score low on IQ tests, but if we really got the most extreme scores, those are probably also affected by things like the folks were very tired, they were distracted, or they just had bad luck on that particular test, which means when they come back for the second test, they're going to score higher simply from this regression toward the mean. And again, that's a problem because it provides an alternative explanation. So therefore, it's a threat to internal validity, meaning we can't confidently say it was our training that caused that effect. So when we're dealing with uh, treatments for folks with extreme scores on a measurement, this is something that we need to be uh, concerned about, need to be aware of.